I have been using different IoT platforms including UV Dots, ThinkSpeak and Blink application for remote sensors monitoring and for controlling different electrical devices. Today for the first time I am going to use the Arduino IoT Cloud. So basically this is going to be a getting started tutorial explaining how to use the Arduino IoT Cloud with the ESP32 Wi-Fi Plus Bluetooth module. To be very fair with you guys, the Arduino IoT Cloud is not as powerful as the Blink application and UV Dots, but you can use the Arduino IoT Cloud as the alternative because it's very easy to use as compared to the other IoT platforms. And moreover, the Arduino IoT Cloud is becoming very popular and I'm sure they will add more widgets and features in the future. Anyways, with Arduino IoT Cloud, you can monitor and control anything you want, but there is a limit which I will explain later in this video. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. In this episode, we will write a very basic program to control the ESP32 onboard LED and then we will modify the code to monitor an analog sensor. For the demonstration purposes, I have used a potentiometer. The very best thing about the Arduino IoT Cloud is that when you make the dashboard on your PC, the Android or iOS app is automatically generated and then you can monitor and control things from your cell phone. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this video can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. You can use the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module alone or you can use my designed ESP32 development board. This is the same board I used in ESP32 Home Automation Project, IoT Water Level Monitoring System and IoT PH Monitoring Project. I will provide a link in the description if you want to make the same ESP32 development board. In the first example, we will control the ESP32 onboard LED which is connected with the GPIO5. Different versions of the ESP32 modules have onboard LEDs connected with different pins. The one I am using has its LED connected with GPIO5. Now let's set up the Arduino IoT Cloud. Search for the Arduino IoT Cloud. Click on the create one if you are not registered. I have already created my account so I will simply enter my username and password. You can also protect your account with two-step verification which is something you are already quite familiar with. I'm going to skip this step. That's it. Let's take a look at different plans before we create our first thing. We have these four monthly and yearly plans. As a beginner, you can start with a free plan and then if you like it, you can try other plans. As a beginner, free plan is not bad at all. You can create two things, unlimited dashboards. 
100 MB to store sketches, one day data retention, and nice compilation time. I myself using the free plan. You can compare free plan with the other three plans and select the one as per your requirement. Enough with the talking. Now let's go ahead and create our first thing. Click on the create thing button. Click on the select device button. Click on the setup new device. Click on the setup a third party device. Select the device and model. Give your device a name. Never share this information with anyone. We will need the device ID and the secret key later. I highly recommend to download the PDF file. Then you can scroll down, check the box and click on the continue button. Now scroll down and you can see the network. You can see the configure button is disabled. This will become enabled after adding at least one variable. So let's add a variable. Type the variable name, in my case LED. Select the variable type. In my case I will select boolean type because the LED can have only two states, high or low. I'm not controlling the brightness. In the variable permission, select read and write and in the variable update policy select on change as i will be using a button to control the esp32 on board led so our variable is set up and now we can click on the add variable button you can see the variable has been added now if we go to the network we can see the configure button is now enabled and now we can enter our wi-fi credentials The secret key we will copy from the PDF file. Now we are ready for the programming. You can see the sketch is updated. When you first click on the sketch you will get this message to upload a sketch via a USB port. Make sure the create agent is installed and running on this computer. If this Arduino create agent is not installed, then you won't be able to upload the code. Click on the learn more. Read the text and then click on the download button to download and install the Arduino create agent. If you didn't see this message, then you can go to my website article and download the Arduino create agent from there. Open the Arduino create agent and follow the on-screen instructions. The LED variable is automatically added. We have this on LED change function which is also automatically generated. Now to write our code to control an LED, let's open the full editor. Select your board type. I started off by defining the pin to which the onboard LED is connected. Next in the setup function, I set the LED as the output device using the pin mode function. Finally in the on LED change function, I added an if condition to check if the button is pressed or not. If the button is pressed then turn on the LED. Else. Turn off the LED. 
Now open the dashboards page to add a button and link the variable. Again, I opened the program, compiled the code, and finally I uploaded the code. I have connected my ESP32 module with the laptop. Next, I'm going to click on the Go to IoT Cloud. Click on the dashboards. Open the project dashboard. You can use this button to control the LED. You can see when I turn on the button, the LED turns off and when I turn off the button, the LED turns on. If the same thing is happening to you, then you can fix this issue by going back to your sketch and change high into low and low into change and once again upload the code. This will fix the issue. Now you can see the problem is fixed. Now for this next example, I have connected the middle leg of the potentiometer with the GPIO pin 35 and the other two legs of the potentiometer with a 3.3 volt and ground. Now to add a variable for the potentiometer, Click on the things and follow the same exact steps. The code has been successfully uploaded. Now we will add a gauge for the potentiometer.
Now you can see as I rotate the knob of the potentiometer the value on the gauge is updated. We have just built a two-way communication system using ESP32 and Arduino IoT Cloud. We can monitor the sensor and control the onboard LED at the same time. Now one last step. If it's hard for you to use your laptop for controlling and monitoring, then you can use the iOS and Android cell phone app. You will need to download the Arduino IoT Cloud Remote app from the Play Store. As you can see, I have already installed this app and I am already logged into my account. You don't need to do anything. This app is automatically generated and this is the best thing I like about the Arduino IoT Cloud as compared to the Blink. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.